presentation is uh, by Shigeharu uh, Shimamura. It will be presented on his behalf by uh, Cherry Kubota. Introduce Ryo Shimamura, Mr. Uh, Shigeharu Shimamura from, from Japan, Mirai Company CEO. Um, <laughs> we are so glad to have this opportunity to present what uh, Mirai is doing. Um, the title of this presentation is Indoor Cultivation for the Future, uh, with the hope that this country has that kind of applications in the near future. But what we are talking about today is the current status. So it's now, the technology used now. OK. A um, little bit of background of Japanese situation. Um, there is an increasing pressure for agriculture to change. Because aging industry, uh, family-oriented small industries, or small family farms. So there is a huge pressure for that, what to do with Japanese agriculture. And then also, uh, uh, there is a huge public concern about uh, uh, food safety, uh, where the food is coming from, and how much pesticide is used. And the recent nuclear uh, power plant disaster added even more concern over the fresh, uh, fruit, uh, fr fresh fruits and vegetables. And there is a trend, increasing interest in plant uh, factories in Japan, indoor cultivations in Japan. And certainly, we have uh, advantages. Number one is a very strong support and understanding from local and national governments. And then also, consumers' appreciation about uh, technology, high-tech agriculture. So the growers don't need to sell ne necessarily uh, it is from organic or it is from traditional farmland. Um, to do indoor cultivations, you really need two types of technologies. One is hardware. The other one is software. Hardware, uh, the, the, the systems need to be affordable. Uh, size could be different, small to large, but needs to be affordable. Um, software uh, is the technology to make high-value crop or nutritional uh, produce. And manuals certainly help growers or uh, practitioners to get to the level, certain level expected. And then also software could maximize the productivity of hardware. So those are very important. And if you look at the indoor cultivation, it's pretty much uh, vertically integrated business models, um, starting from system design um, and production and setting marketing and service. Uh, you can extract system design and manufacturing, production, and add consulting to do technology service. And you can also include the uh, setting and the marketing uh, distribution, and then that actually generate various innovative applications. And Mira is doing basically the both type of models. Uh, some of the hardware key technologies. Uh, number one is the size could be as small as well. Size could be size could be uh, di very different, so it should be uh, scalable. Uh, as an example, out of 60 square meter, which is 60, uh, six, 650 square feet uh, footprint, you can generate about 300 letters heads per day production. And from a 1,200 square meter or 0.3 acre size, you can actually produce. Uh, about 10,000 lettuce heads. Um, the technologies, key technologies uh, regarding hardware, including um, hydroponic systems and environmental control system and hygiene technology. Hydroponic systems, Mirai selected NFT as a basic uh, technology, and then it includes nutrient recirculation and ECPH control, which is a key for growing plants in the hydroponic system. Environmental control is not necessarily sophisticated, uh, high-end control. It's thermostat-based uh, temperature control, CO2 control, and a lighting technology is also another key technology. Um, it could be 100% fluorescent lamps, which is currently affordable, very affordable technology. And the LED is, is, is kind of getting into the market um, uh, as, a, as a plant lighting system, and uh, they could actually combine fluorescent lamps and LEDs. 
hygiene technology is very important because uh, that is the technology to assure your consumers to uh, uh, assure consumers the value of the crop, uh, no pesticides, no pathogens. Uh, uh, so uh, air cleaning technology, filtering technology, and air shower for workers before entering. And even some of the facilities of Mirai uh, force the workers to actually take shower and change clothes to get into the system to complete, complete the removal of pathogens and pests getting into the system. Uh, typical production schedule um, regarding lettuce, starting from seeds and all the way to harvest, uh, it's about 30 days. Somewhere in between, depending on the species, depending on the cultivar, there's a one transplanting. So the, from seed to uh, transplanting, it's a high density production. And then transplanting to the harvest, it's an optimized density production. Um, and then this is a picture. Left hand side is the high density production. And right hand side is the optimized density final production. And note that the distance between growing surface and light it's very, very minimized so that you can maximize the space use. Um, some of the competitive advantages uh, compared to other production systems, food safety, traceability, uh, little waste. Uh, for example, I have some pictures in here. In uh, indoor cultivation system, um, uh, 97 to 98 uh, percent harvestable aerial biomass. So that, in, in another word, waste is only two to three percent. In the open field production, 60 70 percent are harvestable, uh, and waste is 30 to 40 percent. Because you know, you can imagine outer leaves are not harvestable. Um, romaine lettuce may be more than that waste because basically you only harvest the heart of the romaine lettuce head. Um, standardized quality, you can assure the same quality year round so that there is a maximum uh, marketing power because you can promise the supply year round. Software part, again, is very important. Uh, the company has right now 40 plus different leafy crop herb growing manuals. That helps, particularly for beginners to start. And then the company also um, uh, provide a consultation uh, for beginners to get this uh, uh, technology in. Okay, um, talking about uh, quality of the produce, uh, in that um, open discussion, we talked about nutritional value and flavor, and that's actually um, an opportunity, new opportunity for indoor cultivation. Um, this is a little e equation. Um, flavor is a function of uh, genotype, which is biology, species and cultivars, what kind of vegetable it is, and environment as another variable. And then the third is human perception. For example, Asian people like to have stemmy vegetables, crispy vegetables, but may not be so in American culture. So depending on the culture, your requirement is very different. And then also how you know, taste buds sense the flavor is also different. Um, important thing is environment. You have a maximum power to control environment. Therefore, you can design the flavor of your product. A good example based on Shimamura's experience, they were comparing the uh, flavor of lettuce, certain lettuce grown under LEDs versus uh, white fluorescent lumps. And then what they found is uh, lettuce, this particular lettuce grown under LEDs are so much more crispy. So it's, it's a great product for uh, a sandwich application, hamburger application, or a salad application. So that's one example. You can do that. And then you can do not on the area environment, but you can also mani manipulate nutri you know, the nutrient environment, fertilizer composition to change the flavor. Okay, so the company has uh, several uh, uh, plant factories or systems to do the indoor uh, cultivation. Right now, 14 uh, factories uh, in operation. And majority of them are basically producing vegetables and herbs, you know, leafy greens to sell. Uh, but some of them are very unique uh, applications, and I would like to introduce that to you. 
So this one is um, a combination of retail, retail store, and indoor cultivation. So this tiny store located in suburban area near Tokyo, which is in Kashiwa, um, has small uh, indoor production facility inside the same building, and they can sell the produce out of that store. So basically, you're talking about zero transportation. And then you can see that as an urban uh, version of roadside stand. But it's, it's a great idea, and then the building is not new, so it's a renovation-based uh, application. And another example, this is a restaurant combined with indoor cultivation. This Japanese, relatively large Japanese restaurant chain, having 200 or more locations all over in Japan, recently developed a, a facility uh, with this company. Um, and that facility is producing six tons of Mizuna leaves uh, for providing, uh, 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 to provide um, the lettuce to uh, um, 100 uh, of chain restaurants in Japan. Mizuna is quite nice uh, leafy veggies, if you are not familiar with. Actually, it is one of my personal favorite. And then I always look for someone to start um, uh, Mizuna production in the US. OK, another restaurant example. This is an uh, Italian restaurant. Um, a large pizza restaurant chain with uh, about 60 locations in Japan um, uh, have the indoor production capacity of romaine lettuce for their salads. So there are lots of applications and uh, interesting applications uh, uh, going on. Uh, unique applications uh, include some of the projects going on after the 311 disasters, nuclear power and tsunami and earthquake. Um, there is collaboration going on with uh, GE Japan, General Electric Japan, to build an indoor cultivation farm near uh, in Miyagi Prefecture, the um, epicenter, or near the epicenter of that disaster. Another interesting project is um, kids' vegetable farms. Um, it's a school project uh, to support um, uh, STEM education, science, technology education, and to support lunch program in Fukushima area, Japan. So those are also going on. It, uh, the school project right now is a relatively small, but potentially uh, going to large uh, to spread not only Fukushima area, but also uh, outside uh, or uh, other locations in Japan. Ah, this is, this is another unique application. Uh, this is somewhat similar to what uh, uh, University of Arizona is doing, led by Dr. Jean Giacometti. But um, Shimamura did this project uh, back in 2008. Actually, the project itself started several years earlier, and then the production started in 2008. This is a combination of extreme climate and indoor cultivation. So the small facility located in South Pole, Showa Station, Japanese uh, station, uh, now has a very small but um, uh, functional um, indoor cultivation system to support the um, nutritional demand and also psychological support uh, for the workers and engineers in that station. And then Shimamura is, is providing an online consultation, or Shimamura's company provide, providing that consultation to that uh, uh, people. Okay. Another unique application, this is a shopping mall and indoor cultivation. So the picture uh, up there is a shopping mall. Um, and then, um, I don't have a pointer, but uh, there is one little um, box far over there. Um, and then that is actually this uh, uh, production facility. It's in Kashiwa no ha, um, uh, uh, district or the, uh, of the city Kashua, Kashua in Japan. It's about 45 minutes um, by train from central Tokyo. So it's a suburban area, but newly developed area. So relatively large shopping mall equipped with this small um, demonstration facility so that public people can actually see plants are growing in this kind of facility. And then so that it, 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 it you, you get more familiar with that technology rather than just, you know, 
uh, reading uh, the press or press article or news. Okay, um, another important thing I want to emphasize, um, knowing that what's going on in Japan, uh, uh, to be successful, it seems to be um, very important to find good collaboration. And, and there are lots of industry academia collaborations going on in Japan. And this is one of the um, uh, collaboration or consortium supported by government, government you know, the Ministry of Agriculture. And consortium members include many different companies um, and then also university, Chiba University, um, to demonstrate large scale uh, indoor cultivation uh, uh, with relatively low cost. So that's, that's the project uh, going on in Chiba. And another interesting application is a community application. So this appliance company uh, designed, in collaboration with Mirai, designed the small micro vegetable garden which can fit in your kitchen counter. And that has a nutrient recirculation system and lighting and minimum you know, system. And users actually can create a community user group to exchange information um, and then also look up the website uh, to see other users' comments or look up the website uh, uh, for information about you know, how do we grow these vegetables and species um, like that. And so the driving force of this type of community project uh, is uh, uh, development, urban development. So this urban developer wanted to increase the value of the community. Kashiwa no Ha is a um, newly developed area. Because of the new um, commuter train station, it's rapidly developed. And then the urban developer involved in that development even want to make the community unique and value, high value. So uh, not only users group, but also university located there and company nearby are connected by internet to exchange information. All right, some of the economic analysis um, uh, I'd like to show in here. Uh, so this is based on the size of building, uh, 1,300 square meter, which is about 14,000 square feet. Um, that building has a, a, a growing area uh, by footprint uh, of 1,100 square meter. And that can generate that area, you know, 1,100 square meter of growing area can generate uh, 4,500 square meter of production surface. So it's about four or five times of production surface of the footprint of the production area. Um, and then assuming uh, leafy lettuce is grown, then you can expect a little bit over 10,000 heads of leafy lettuce can be grown on, out of this facility. And the target size at harvest is 100 grams per head. And NF NFT system and lighting includes LEDs and white fluorescent lamps, so the combination of those. And other equipment is a standard, you know, cooling and um, uh, seasoning production system, irrigation tank, and all that. Uh, equipment facility life. The building itself, this is a newly constructed building, but it, it, it could, uh, uh, the facility life or the building life is 20 years. And production systems uh, life is uh, seven years and 15 years for everything else. And the balance estimate, uh, I will show you the, some of the breakdown after this slide, but balance estimate annual gross sales, uh, assuming 10% loss, so 90% all sold, 10% um, loss, and uh, 365 day production. And then the sales is about uh, 4.1 million US dollars. Um, that is based on about uh, well, uh, $5.68 per pound. I think it's uh, $12, uh, sorry, um, uh, $12 per kilos. So that's, that's about the number. Um, and then annual costs, that include uh, all the operational costs, operation costs, and then also um, 
depreciation is about uh, 3.4 million dollars and then that is translated as 4.70, so $4.70 uh, uh, cost per pound. So you can see that it's, it's generating the net profit and therefore you can actually expect investment return after six years. Um, the next slide is showing um, some of the breakdown. So out of the, well, capital costs to build that facility um, uh, is 7.4 .4 million US dollars. And half of that is basically for building and construction. And then the other half is equipment and facility, including an FD system, lighting system, all that inside. Um, annual operation cost is $3.4 million. And about 26%, one quarter, is for salaries and wages. Uh, assuming two full-time workers and uh, uh, hourly laborers, uh, 210 hours per day, $10 uh, wage per hour. And, um, and then the next largest or equivalently large uh, item is utilities. So electricity and then also water. And electricity is of course uh, the, the, the major part of the utility cost. And then uh, uh, depreciation is 22%. And so that's the breakdown of um, uh, operation cost. So by looking at, so those numbers are based on what is going on right now. And then by looking at those numbers, in, you know, like, it's very feasible. You, 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 you can actually generate a profit out of that kind of production. So um, I was asking Shimamura, Shimamura-san, um, what are actually you know, challenges to do successful business of indoor cultivation? So here is what he said. Um, basically, it is all about people working there, the right kind of people with the right kind of experience and education is the most important part. So uh, he, he gave a great example. So just like uh, wineries need a great viticulturist, and then also sake makers need a sake um, a masters, uh, indoor cultivation facility requires a good, educated, trained uh, people having that skill and then also uh, knowledge, um, experience. And indoor cultivation, this is the second point Shimamura made, uh, indoor cultivation will never be the same as industrial factory manufacturing. Even though we call plant factory, but it's not exactly plant factory. Uh, because it's not always one plus one equal two situation. Um, so it's, it's, it, it, it is, it is difficult to apply sometimes a uh, linear um, approach. So you have to take non-linear approach because it's a biological system and because it's agriculture business. So those two points um, are very important. And then I, I'd like to end this presentation with that. Thank you so much. We have uh, two or three minutes for a few quick questions before we go into the break. Yes? Um, how many plants do you have per square meter in the two different spacings? Sure. The question was how many, uh, basically, what is the plant density inside of the factory? I think we've got some quick math going on here. So, uh, <laughs> uh, now we can go to the next question and come back to this one. All right, the, uh, another question dealt with the fluorescent fixtures. We know fluorescent fixtures are cool. So they're re uh, relatively oh, close to the crop canopy. That allows for multi-layering, OK? Uh, have they done enough with LEDs to realize whether they can be as close? And the other thing here, in the United States, 
uh, when I grow a leafy green, my light fixtures have to be shatterproof uh, because they're worried about somebody accidentally uh, shattering either a fluorescent fixture, incandescent fixture, or metal halite and those shards of glass ending up in your edible product. And uh, so I, that's one of the things I have to watch in my greenhouse to be certified. Did you get, get your question? The second question I caught. The first question was about whether LEDs would be a potentially viable alternative oh. and whether or not you can have them as close to your canopy as fluorescents. Uh, let, me, let, let us answer that for the questions from him. あの、傾向とと同じぐらいあの効率よく、まあだからLEDの、これからの見通しというか、あれば、それを、あの、えっと、レディに関しては、おそらくもう栽培上は、あの、傾向とそんなに変わらなくなってきてるので、あとコスト Performance is, is already as, as good as uh, white fluorescent tubes, but the cost, initial cost, is still um, more expensive. Therefore, it needs to go down to, to get higher cost performance. Then, let me translate the second question. Nibamino question wa, eh, to, ano, ah, so da, so da, ano, garasu kan desu yo ne, ano, keiko to. De, so re o, yo suru ni, あの、室内で使うっていうと、例えばそれが割れた時に、あの、野菜の上にこうバーッとかかったりとかいうような、そういうなんかこう危険物取り扱いみたいな扱いになったりとかはしないかどうかっていう話ですね。日本の場合はない